uh, again based on the previous slide as you can see if you can see from the previous slide by the way you can see you have something like 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2, 0 times 3 for the first row of the matrix and then for the second row of the matrix you have 1 times 0, 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3 and so on, so on, so on. For the last row what you have is uh, W raised to the power 3, 0 then raised to the power 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3. The reason you have a product 3 times 0, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, whatever, is because I told you earlier. If you look back, you see you have a product of raised to the power n times k. That's why you have something like 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2, 0 times 3, 1 times 0, 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, and so on, so on. That's, that's the reason. Okay? So, So, if you think about it, if you look at equation 6, for example, you can see this guy is W raised to the power 9. Here you have something like W raised to the power 6. This term here, you have something like W raised to the power 4, and so on, so on. So, so let's take a look. For example, suppose we're going to say, how do you calculate W raised to the power 6? Well, remember... The reason you get that number 6 is because you have something n times k, small n times k. So suppose n equal to 2, this guy is equal to 2. Suppose small k equal to 3, this guy is equal to 3. So what you have is w raised to the power 6. So let's try for a moment, let's see, try to figure out what is w raised to the power 6 equal to. How do you calculate that? Well, the way we do it is we say, W raised to the power 6 is the same thing as W raised to the power 4 and multiply that with W raised to the power 2. Well, remember why one would put a 4 here? Because that corresponding to the sample data point. You have 4 data point and that's why capital N is equal to 4. The next thing I say is this. What is the definition of W? Well, According to the definition that I talked to you earlier, W, the definition of W is right here. This is the definition of W. That is defined earlier. In other words, we defined earlier on my previous slide, capital W is defined as E raised to the power minus i 2 pi divided by capital N. Therefore, when you take that W, you raise to the power N. It is the same thing like taking this W, that is W, raised to the power N. Okay? And, by the way, you have W2, that term is still here. All right, now, next thing we'd like to see. E raised to the power minus I 2 pi over capital N times N, these two cancel out. So that term right here, so in the green color, is exactly this term right here. And the red term, which is W raised to the power 2, that term is still right here, still right there. Now I claim, I claim that this guy is equal to 1. And that's why W raised to the power 6 is the same thing as W raised to the power 2. Well, why this guy is equal to 1? Well, the reason is very easy. The reason just because you can use the so-called Euler identity again. Using use Euler identity. That express E according to the uh, Euler identity, you can say that E raised to the power minus I two pi again is simply equal to cosine 
of 2 pi minus i sine of 2 pi. And obviously, uh, sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, and cosine of 2 pi is equal to 1. And that's why I told you e raised to the power minus i 2 pi is equal to 1. So the bottom line is this. w raised to the power 6 is the same thing as w raised to the power 2. All right? That is a very important conclusion. And the reason you have that kind of a nice relationship is because based on the way that you define the function w is equal to this. Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. If you take a look at the next slide, suppose we say, well, in general, we have to calculate w raised to the power small n times k. Well, I claim that w raised to the power n k is the same thing like w raised to the power p, where p is defined according to the formula shown in equation 8. Oh, by the way, according to the equation 8, the function mod basically means the remainder of this value, small n k divided by capital N. So, if you take a look at the previous example, okay, let's see, do we get a good answer or not? Remember, in the previous example, you have small n equal to 2, and small k is equal to 3, and capital N is equal to 4. Remember that example? And from that example, we, we already conclude that w raised to the power 6 is the same thing as w raised to the power 2. So let's apply this new general formula. Let's see what happened. n is equal to 2, k is equal to 3, capital N is equal to 4. And therefore, p should be equal to the remainder of n times k, which is the remainder of 6, n times k is 6, divided by 4. Now obviously, if you take 6 divided by 4, the remainder is equal to 2. And that's why you can see w raised to the power 6 is the same thing as w raised to the power p. p in this case means 2. So based on the previous observation, we can make a very general conclusion. We say w raised to the power small nk is always equal to the same value as w raised to the power p, where p, the power, is equal to the remainder of nk divided by capital N. Now, make use of this nice relationship, then we will see that make, if we make use of a nice relationship shown in equation 8, equation 8, which is this equation right here, okay? If you make use of this very useful equation, relationship, w raised to the power nk is the same thing as w raised to the power p. If you make use of that, and I will demonstrate to you in the next lecture that we can do a matrix time a vector much, much quicker. So that will conclude this lecture. And here is the acknowledgment.